What's up, everybody? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Thursday, November 16th, 2017. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside the achievement hunter himself, Jack Patillo. Hi, everybody. Hello. How are you doing? Thank We're you for great. having me on the show. Thank you for coming by the show. Absolutely. Flying all the way to San Francisco just to watch Justice League. Yes. But then we tricked well, you into hosting a bunch of other too. shows. I mean, well, yeah. sure, sure. That's a part of it, yeah. but you know. I mean, I could, I could see Justice League anywhere, but could. I wanted to come hang out with you guys and talk Justice League, talk movies, talk video games, do yeah. everything I can, see your beautiful office here in San Francisco. Hard to believe you've never been here before. I know. It's, it's wild. I come yeah. out to, more than any place, I think. I come to San Francisco, but it's always like, hey, I'm in San Francisco. Cool, that was fun. Bye. I'm going to Ubisoft's and office and I'm playing some game for 12 hours and I'm yeah, going home. Bye. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so, it happens to us a lot here. Yeah. San Francisco, the hub of the video game world. Absolutely. If you didn't know, ladies and gentlemen, this is Kind of Funny Games Daily. Each and every weekday on a variety of platforms, we run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about before giving you perspective, offering advice, answering your questions, reading bad PSN names, and having a good time with you. The Kind of Funny Best Friends. If you like that, you can watch live on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames. But remember, we don't look at the chat. We're making a polished podcast. Instead, if you want to be part of the show, you need to go to kindoffunny.com slash kfgd. Give me all the stuff we read on the show there. Unless we get something wrong. If you're watching live, we get something wrong. You have to go to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong. Correct us. So at the end of the show, we can set the record straight for everybody watching later on youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames or listening on podcast services around the globe. Housekeeping, we need to win Andrew Renee, the Trending Gamer of the Year Award at the Video Game Awards. We have to do this. We have to shove it down Jeff Keighley's face and show anybody connected to Kind of Funny wins. Danny didn't win last year because he wasn't connected with us, but then he was this year, but that it doesn't work retroactively, right, Andy? Right. Thanks. Everybody, right now, you can vote for <laughs> a- Andrea for Trending Gamer at the Game Awards once you, you every 24 Andy, hours. Didn't you? you almost said vote for Andy for the Trending Gamer. Not yet. Next year, Andy, trending game of the year. But right now, we got to win it for Andrew or Renee. You can vote once every 24 hours. The easiest way, of course, is to go to Google. If you just type in trending gamer vote, you can vote right there on the Google search results. It's amazing. Also, remember, there's a new party mode up. Smash is on YouTube. Nidhog2 is on patreon.com slash games. Even if you don't want early access to our shows, it would mean a lot if you went to that Patreon page. Tossed us a few bucks. But for now, let's begin the show with what is and forever will be the Roper Report. Time for some news! Wow, that was a real, that was a guitar lick from Andy. Sure was. Wow, damn, that was good. That was really good, Andy. Uh, I'm gonna say four and a half items on the rope report. A baker's dozen. Thank you. Uh, we had a late breaking one, Jack. So that's that like came Rod in. Tomatoes, like forty percent, right? Exactly. Works, so yeah. <laughs> I had a late breaking one as we were getting ready to come Whoa. in here. Nintendo put out a press release that is news to no one. Nintendo news: Nintendo systems again top hardware sales for October. Shocking. According to NPD Group, which tracks U.S. video game sales, the Nintendo Switch system was the number one video game hardware in October, followed by the Super Nintendo Entertainment System Super NES Classic Edition system. God damn Nintendo. In the number two <laughs> spot. When combined with the Nintendo 3DS family of systems, Nintendo systems accounted for two thirds of all video game hardware sold in the United States for the second month in a row. The U.S. video game industry achieved hardware sales of more than one million total units in October for the first time since 2011. That's actually newsworthy. Uh, the Super Mario Odyssey game for Nintendo Switch emerged as the top selling video game of the month on the NPD sales charts, even though it launched at the end of the month on October 27th. The Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild games for Nintendo Switch finished as the number 10 and number 11 individual uh, games of the month, respectively. So the full top 10 going to be rolling out in the coming days as NPD okay. does, but they give it to, you know, obviously the publishers first, let them go. No real surprise there. Nice to see hardware so- sales of more than a million for the first time since 2011. Yeah, that's wild. But you figure it's got to be driven by Mario. Oh, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And I think that's why you see Kart and Zelda surging, right? Is that so many people just jumped on yeah. the Switch train. Absolutely. Yeah, that, that's one thing. It's like it's weird to think Nintendo has been launching systems without a Mario game. It's right. like, you know, like back in the day, like Super Nintendo and NES, it was like, oh, yeah, you got your copy of Mario and Duck Hunt, you know, mm-hmm. and then you got your copy of Super Mario World. And so now, like, I'm old school Nintendo gamer. I, I missed, I, like... I jumped. I to be fair, I jumped over to like the PlayStation Xbox generation. Like yeah. I went to, uh, I went from, uh, uh, you know, su- I went from Super Nintendo, and then kind of like went into arcades actually, and then I went when I came back to home gaming. I went to uh, PlayStation One, you know, and then yeah. I went to PlayStation Two, initial then the Xbox, the original Xbox, and then kind of went from there. And sure. so, and then uh, yeah, but I missed all of like the GameCube days, N sixty four days. I missed just, some good stuff. I missed all of that stuff. So where are you right now with Switch? You guys bought, you got a Switch? You I have a Switch. Switch? Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I bought one initially because everyone was playing Super Mario Kart and like, all right. And they're yeah. like, yeah, we're playing like online. It's cool. I'm like, okay, cool. And then immediately they stopped after yeah. I bought it. I was like, all right. So I was like, oh, it's kind of a cool idea of having a system you can drop in on, on dock, play it on the console yeah. or I'll play it on TV. 
But I mean, honestly, for me, I travel so much that having a system like that that I can play on a plane is great. And like yeah. more than any, more than anywhere else, that's where I play on the Switch. Like I've got um, I've been playing Kingdom uh, uh, Mario plus Kingdom Rabbids Battle, right? Or yeah, Mario yeah, yeah. plus Rabbids, Rabbids Kingdom, Kingdom Battle. Battle. Yeah, yeah. I've been playing it's that a, a lot. I like um, really good one. And then it's like there's a lot of indie games on there too. So oh my god, yeah. One of my favorite games ever is a game called Kingdom the Game, and it's just okay. a little side scrolling, real simple game, but it's a beautiful, fun little game, and you can play it for 30 minutes, you can play it for four hours. And okay. So I love that kind of stuff and. But um, but I never, I haven't played the new Zelda at all. Oh wow, just, yeah, really? Yeah. See, that's so weird. Is like so many people have the Switch and it's just been the Zelda machine. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Do you, like, are you not a Zelda fan? I know I'm a fan, but I mean I'm not I'm not a super fan. Again, yeah. like you know I had this weird miss where I I missed a huge chunk of the Nintendo generation. So sure. like I remember you know the old school like Link to the Past. Like that to me is like the best Zelda game ever. But yeah. I never played Ocarina of Time or anything. Oh my God, I know, Jack. I know. Oh, you're killing me. But uh. Yeah, and so so now it's kind of like everyone's like freaking out, and like everyone's even now everyone's like like you know the new Super Mario games like oh it's like a Super Mario like like the N sixty four Mario I'm like yeah never played I it. have no like, connection yeah to that. I'm like, I have okay. no nostalgia for that I'm sure that's great but yeah and it's like in, you know I'm I'm definitely more like I've I, I turned it more towards Xbox you know of course we, I mean we're achievement hunter obviously yeah. we're Xbox we you know Rooster Teeth started with Red versus Blue so we're very you know biased towards Microsoft and Xbox and we've done you know PlayStation stuff like any PlayStation PlayStation exclusive you know um, Last of Us and and Uncharted like right. we always jump on that too um, but now honestly I'm, I'm turning more PC like that's wow, why that's why we're going these now. dorks yeah get out of here and with your so, motherboards dude, and your Excel and your Minesweeper. You start. <laughs> I, I dominate Minesweeper. <laughs> I, I will. I will challenge anyone to a Minesweeper duel and go to town on that. So, uh, but yeah, but like playing games. Like I, I played. Uh, I think the first time I, I bought, like I built a gaming rig. Yeah. And I, I installed Steep. The, oh the, sure, the Ubisoft, yeah, the one, Ubisoft yeah. title, and because Steep had a like a like a HD texture, uh, HD, uh, HD texture HDR, pack. Yeah. And I was like, all right, so I downloaded that and I played it and I was like, oh my God. And it's like, everything loads so fast. And I'm playing Assassin's Creed on PC right now. And it's yeah. just like, everything loads super quick. And it's like, oh, this is great. But to be fair, I just got an Xbox One X. Yeah. It is faster, but still, it's not as fast as the PC. Of course, so. yeah. I mean, I give PC shit all the time, but I, I've openly said before that it's it's the best way to play games. Okay. If, you know what I mean? If that's performance and that, but it, yeah. I just like the idea of sitting on the couch. And I know Steam Link, I know I can yeah, have yeah. the computer up there, blah, blah, blah. I just want it all to work. I don't want... I, I, I've have bad PC things happen to me all the time because oh, yeah. I never turn my PC on and that's okay. the problem. Yeah, well, I mean, the same deal. Like, we don't turn our PlayStation on except for, like, we have to Here's dust it off. Here's a giant fucking yeah. firmware update. It's like, yeah. oh, we've got four updates of four gigs a piece. Like, it's wherever you're happy. You just play games, everybody. Absolutely. Stop arguing. Kevin, stop arguing with people about where they play their games. Just let them play. Thank you, Kevin. You gave me a thumbs up on that one. Uh, the first item on the Roper Report that's a full-fledged news story. Even YouTube thinks Nintendo can do better with their content policies. Hot is, take right there. This is an interview over on Polygon. Let me jump in there. YouTubers gritted their teeth when Nintendo announced new rules for live streaming its games earlier this year. But YouTube's head of gaming, Ryan Wyatt, friend of the show, Fwiz. So Fwiz works for Nintendo now? Oh, no, no, he YouTube. works for YouTube. Oh, sorry, He's YouTube. Sorry. Okay, yeah, says so. he believes there are better options. Why well, told Polygon that YouTube and Nintendo have constant conversations with each other to try to figure out how to benefit both the video game publisher and the creator community on YouTube. Wyatt said that while the question was better posed in Nintendo, there are a few changes that Nintendo can make to make for a more engaged community. Quote, they're spending a lot of time looking at how to engage their creation community and how to handle monetization, Wyatt said. YouTubers are able to live stream Nintendo content and monetize through our non-ad products. That's a better question served to them for what they want to do in the future. But I think that there are better ways to improve and better optimize how they work with the creators. In September, Nintendo announced that YouTubers who belong to Nintendo's creator program, which launched in 2015, wouldn't be able to live stream Nintendo games under their account. This meant YouTubers can't monetize their live streams and are required stream and are required stream games under a separate account. There's a typo there. Polygon, fix it later. People partnered through Nintendo's creator program could still upload Let's Play videos, but even that aspect isn't without criticism from the community. Many of YouTube's biggest creators whose videos center around gameplay content have stayed away from Nintendo's program. The issue comes down to a division of revenue earned from the videos. A YouTuber earns 60% of a cut from a typical YouTube video. Google, YouTube's parent company, takes the other 40%. If a YouTuber belongs to Nintendo Creators Program the and uploads a video with Nintendo content, they'll earn even less. Nintendo and Google each take a piece of the proceeds earned, 70% for channels, 60% for videos. Here's the big issue. If YouTubers don't sign up for Nintendo's creator program, they can't upload any videos featuring Nintendo content. If they do, Nintendo will claim copyright infringement and the videos will be demonetized. For a video that earns more than a million views, that's quite a bit of revenue lost through AdSense, Google's advertising network. You threw your hand up. 
Yeah, we are one of the we are one of the groups that avoided Nintendo content specifically mm. because of that. Yeah, like yeah, it was. I mean, we were when uh, speaking on behalf of Rooster Teeth, we were in the middle of a, uh, a Smash Brothers mega tournament with oh, like really? sixty four employees of Rooster Teeth. We literally put out two episodes of it. This hit and we stopped it. Wow. We had filmed everything and we're like, yeah, we're not going to release anything because screw Nintendo. Sure. It is the dumbest, most ass backward thing they could have ever done. It yeah. makes no sense. My. My personal philosophy, and I think a lot of Ashima Hunter agrees with me, and Rooster agrees with me, is that to us, video games are an instrument. And we play video games in a way that is different than a normal person. And we play, we make content using a video game. Where it's like, think if, you know, uh, like uh, someone making guitars, you know, like if, if Les Paul was like, okay, if you're going to use our bass, then anytime you use it, you have to give us a cut of it. Mm. It's like, no, that makes no sense at all. Like right. we're, we're, you, you created something, and we're going to take it and make something new out of it. And so when Nintendo does this, it's just so dumb. It makes no sense to me. I mean, we're, I mean, unless people are straight up like, here's the story of Mario. Don't buy Mario. Just watch this. That's one thing. But I mean, people just want to make content of them playing games. But that's the thing is how many people really. I mean, don't get me wrong. There are here's a straight playthrough of Mario, but Mario is never about the story. Yeah, and that's yeah, the yeah. thing. That's what's always been so interesting for me. I, you know, it's Nintendo's IP. It's Nintendo's thing. Legally, they're in they're in their lane. They're yeah. they're saying the right thing. However, the fact that no other publisher really does this, it's no one else, major publisher, and that and I think that you know Naughty Dog through PlayStation would have a better case of like, hey, or, or no, like, or like our, Telltale or something. Exactly, like that. our whole thing is don't do you know yeah. a story. You can't screw this. Whereas with Mario, it's like, hey, look at the crazy jump I did, or how I beat this guy super fast, or yeah. this cool gameplay mechanic I did, which is why it's nice that the Switch has now added the ability to share video and stuff on social media channels. But like ever since they came out, it was with this plan. It was wow, what a tone deaf decision yeah. on where you are in at the time, 2015, but especially now in 2017, being so successful. Don't you want everyone playing your games and yeah. sharing your games and sh talking about how great your games are? Yeah, I mean that's what it comes down to. Or let's plays when it comes down to it are marketing for video game companies. Yeah. You know whether it's positive or negative, it's like if I love a game, I'm gonna play the shit out of that game. Yeah. You know, it's like I'm gonna play Assassin's Creed from start to finish on my personal U on my personal Twitch channel, which will then go on YouTube. And to me, people see me enjoying that game, then maybe they'll be like, oh, I want to check it out too and go 100%. buy it. And yeah. so it's like I don't understand the logic behind like, oh, we we want to avoid that. It's like. My the only hope I have is that now that Nintendo's on the rise, you know what I mean. They're back in the good graces yeah, after yeah. you know uh, the Wii U being a failure and not being uh, being a. Don't get on my case. I know Wii U had <laughs> great games, but the Wii U console sucked and I hate it. And so yeah, yeah. just about everybody else, and that's why I didn't sell. That's what I'm saying. If you loved it, great. Uh, <laughs> now that they're back on this positive swing, though, like let's go down the list of things that piss off the audience and try to change that. And how much money is Nintendo making from their thirty percent cut or whatever yeah. it is? And on top of that. Do you need that? Like yeah, the, we talk yeah. about greedy companies all the time. Yes, we're going to talk about microtransactions here in a second, oh, as boy. usual. Uh, this is one of those moves of just like, is this generating enough revenue off of you that you're nickel and diming these people and then cutting off your nose to spite your face so that like yeah. Achievement Hunter isn't doing a Mario Party thing or isn't making it, you know, when they yeah. you do have, everybody's playing. I remember when everybody was playing Kart at Rooster Teeth and Andy yeah. was playing in the tournaments and stuff. It was like, why wouldn't you want all these people sharing that content and putting that on their channels? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's super, super dumb, and it's just a backwards way of thinking of things. It's, yeah. it's old school media way of thinking of things. Exactly. Number two, uh, Battlefronts, Loot Crate, Microtransaction, Debate Continues. Uh, there was an AMA over on Reddit. IGN's boiled down some pertinent details for you. As part of a Reddit AMA yesterday, three DICE developers answered a selection of reader comments about the much-discussed new shooter. While all three mostly skirted direct questions about the game's loot boxes, particularly accusations of a pay-to-win focus, Branivals, I don't have, I did not copy over his first part, sorry. The, you know, they put that lead paragraph in, I'm like, get, yeah, get, yeah, all right, let's yeah, go. Let's get uh, closing comments did go some way towards assuring players that changes would come. Quote, we were incredibly saddened by the negative response from you, the community on Reddit about the game, he explained. In fact, we hated it. We truly did because we want to make the, a game that you love. We've made a really cool, fun, and beautiful game, but it was overshadowed by issues with the progressive system. Progression system. We will fix this. Predictably, the devs were less forthright about exactly what changes could be made uh, to the existing system. But there were hints of what's being considered quote we're going to continue adjusting the crate systems content and progression mechanics to hit a point that gives players a great balanced experience at all skill levels wrote executive producer john wazalox uh quote we're working on expanding the number of ways that players can progress putting more control in their hands and providing more options and choice in the way people play there's not much in the game that we wouldn't revisit 
if to improve the game at, for as many players as possible. Yesterday's fans reacted negatively to estimations that it would take six months of constant play or over two thousand dollars to unlock every item in the game. A point that the devs involved in the AMA in, did tackle. Quote: We've seen the speculation about how long it takes for players to earn things, said John. But our average, our averages based on the play first trial are much faster than what's uh, out there. But as more players come in, that could change. Uh, John went on to address uh, the choice to cap the number of credits players can earn through arcade mode. It sounds as though the cap is on the way out. Quote, we're committed to making progression a fun experience for all of our players. Nothing should feel unattainable. And if it does, we'll do what it takes to make sure it's both fun and achievable. As we update and expand arcade mode, we'll be working towards making sure that players can continue to progress without daily limits. Have you been paying attention to this giant nightmare for them? A little bit. I've, yeah. I've been watching some of this, the chaos happening. I've been watching Reddit explode and like the, the most downvoted comment ever yep, from yep, the, yep. You know, the, the team over. We it. wanted it to be a reward to yeah. get Vader and Luke. Yeah, it's it's a new style of gaming. It's it's the mobile style. It's the Farmville style of gaming yeah. has made its way to consoles and right. PCs now. And some people are OK with that. Some people are like, OK, free to play is the way to go. Yeah. The problem with this is it's not free to play. Like this is a sixty dollar title. Yep. And then on top of that, you have the free to play style progression system, which doesn't make sense. Um, especially the arcade mode. It's good to hear they're getting rid of the cap there. Like I was so watching, stupid. I watched Boogie playing it, and he hit the the, arcade, the cap, and it's like, all right, yeah, you can't earn credits for the next three hours. Cool or, down. Like, and it's like this what? isn't a free to play ta- a tapper game. Yeah. I'm playing on my phone. Yeah, yeah, that makes no sense at all. Like yeah. I don't. I mean, I don't know what the logic it was behind that. And. If they, I mean, if, if if they went out, if EA went out and did something radical, we're like, we're going to give Battlefront 2 to everyone for free right now. And yeah. then this system was on top of it. There would be some, some pushback on it, but it would be... You'd still be like, okay. It'd be 5% of the amount of pushback. Yeah. Because this, they, they built it as a free-to-play game. Yeah. And they, but they released it as a $60 title, like, you know, $60 to $80, whatever. And so I think that is the biggest thing. Like, that's that's the issue there for me. It's It makes no sense. The, the, the Loot Crate style system... I get it. Someone like Overwatch did it great. It was all cosmetic. Yep. When you start throwing in progression stuff in the loot crates, that's when it gets sticky. Yeah. And that's when it gets kind of dirty. And I'm not a fan of that. If, if you're going to be releasing full titles, you need to get all that crap out of loot crates. You, you, need, to, you need to not randomize progression. What I want to do is toss it over to our... Well, here's what happened. This has been an ongoing debate, obviously. Yes. In, within On this show, we've talked about it. How like, Yesterday, the conversation was basically... I was talking to Christian Phillips, who used to run Sony uh, San Diego, and how... Microtransactions themselves aren't bad. It's just no. that people are using them so poorly right now. Yes. A uh, friend of ours, the show of kind of funny, uh, Rami Ismail over from Vlam Beer, quote tweeted Damien Schubert here, who was a developer and creative director over at Boss Fight. This is a long one, but it's actually a really great look from somebody who works in, hey, here's how I use loot boxes. Here's how I put microtransactions in. So I'm going to let it go. I want you all to hear this. Let's talk about loot boxes and how annoying it is to watch AAA publishers fuck them up from the perspective of someone who has to design them. Who has to to design to them. He means design. I've been working in free-to-play games for four years, and loot boxes are pretty crucial to the business model working. But it is possible to do them ethically, and they are super easy to fuck up. The number one mistake that I've seen in free-to-play games is devs who don't understand that not spending is normal play. Most of your customers will never give you a dime. The Zynga Facebook games that used to spam your feed were a success if they had a conversion rate of 2%. That's right. A successful business model of nine, a successful business model if 98% of your population never drops a dime. Things have edged up since then, and people designing these have gotten more sophisticated, but we're still in a world where the guy who plans microtransactions are delighted if you spend 5%. I'm sorry, delighted if 5% spent. What this means, though, is that the non-spendy version of the game is the norm. The game that you see as a non-spender is about what 90% plus of your customers will see. Dungeon Keeper on mobile failed because what those people saw was a game where spending was absolutely mandatory. The view of the game killed the game because that 90% plus of the population is your game's virality, uh, also known as word of mouth. If your free players, or in the case of Battlefront box spenders, have a negative reaction, it can kill the word of mouth, tank reviews, etc. Some people think that game devs don't care about keeping that 90% plus, but that's not true. Most of these games need those non-spendy players because they're multiplayer games. In MMOs, you need people so that dungeon queues will fire. In PvP games, you need enough people to make a match and match make them with appropriate enemies. 
This is much more true in AAA games where the PvP is synchro synchronous. Synchronous? What am I saying wrong? Synchronous. Now? Synchronous? I said it right? Nailed yeah. it. <laughs> then in mobile games where the PvP is against offline components frequently. See the core clash of clans games. So what Battlefront got wrong was to put content that people consider core behind a hugely long grind path. They missed that this would be seen as the normal game. And one more thing. Once you go into microtransactions, players start suspecting they are your motives for everything. So even in the scenario where a game designer that, for example, accidentally put an unlock behind an 80-hour grind because he fat-fingered it, or because he likes, to, he likes grinds or hard games, players will assume the company is making a money grab. That's because, in a lot of cases, the players are correct. Bringing microtransactions into things erases the benefit of the doubt. I am still a huge proponent of free-to-play games because I'm a big hippie. I like the idea that 98% of my population can play for free. And a lot of research has been done to find that most heavy spenders, whales, are people who like spending and don't feel manipulated into it. Think high-powered lawyers with too much spare cash lying around. I'm pretty fine with those guys paying a lot of money so that a whole bunch of kids without money or credit cards can play my games for free. In talks in the past, I've compared it to the old patron system in the Renaissance times, where kings and rich dudes would subsidize art so everyone could enjoy it. But still, good microtransaction design is an art. It requires designers to be equal partners with product managers to come up with something that is perceived as fair and is celebrated. People like Jim Sterling would disagree, but the difference between Overwatch and Battlefront is stark. People celebrate new skins being added to the former. When a new Magic or Hearthstone set comes out, people celebrate the opportunity to spend more. Same for the new FIFA season. This is important. Microtransactions will fail if it doesn't feel good to spend. It will fail if it creates a poisonous environment around the game instead of excitement. Anyway, I need to hit the road for a convention, but th th these thoughts have been rattling around my brain for a few days now. Andrea Renee called this out. I'd already seen it, so don't let her think she gave me this video. Jesus. But she had said that basically this is what she's been trying to say. Yeah. And I think it's what, in a roundabout way, I've been saying or Wit has been saying or everything of like, there are ways to do this, but I've never, I haven't ever heard it explained in the way yeah. of like, the free game is the normal game. Yeah. That's the way everybody should be looking at this. That 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 is a beautiful, beautiful response to this. That's exactly mm -hmm. what developers need to know. Like, and everybody I mean, needs to paste that on every cubicle for every game going forward absolutely. of what this is. Yeah, I mean, like you said, like the whales are like the people are going to be paying for the game. It's, it's interesting that he brought it up like the kings and the rich people or like, yeah. you know, they would they would subsidize art for everyone else. Like, that's an interesting idea. But I had friends who worked at SOE on like DC Universe Online and yeah. they said, yeah, 5% of people will, or, you know, or 95% of people will never pay a dime for this game. But the 5% of people that do pay enough that they're making more off that than they were off subs. And it's like, oh, oh, I had no idea because I was like, all right, that's a game I want to pay money for. But I like, I've got mobile games that I play totally free to play. It's a lot of fun, but it's like, oh, I'll drop 20 bucks. 100%. Like, yeah, and it's like, all right, I'll just get a little bit extra and get a little bit, you know, and, and it's I, like, that's fine. And I want to, I want to, I want to bring in Cameron here who wrote into kindoffunny.com slash KFGD and says, hey, Greg, Often I share your viewpoint when it comes to a lot of issues in the games industry, but recently, with all the discussion around loot boxes and microtransactions, our views seem to have deviated a bit. While I do appreciate your willingness to play the devil's advocate, do you think that the fact that you're okay throwing money at loot boxes in Marvel Heroes until you get the skin you want, or paying $150 each year for a subscription to DC Universe Online, a game you don't play much anymore, puts you in a position where it's harder to relate to the average Joe slash Jane gamer? With the Marvel Heroes discussion yesterday, what stood out to me is how no one seemed to understand that these packs people pay for are pricey, sometimes costing the price of a AAA retail game just to expand what a player will have access to over time. So while the consumer should go in knowing that this type of game could shut down at any moment, the price of this content isn't reflective of something like Frozen, the Frozen Wilds for Horizon, where you pay X amount for Y amount of content. $50 for a Guardian of the Galaxy's pack wouldn't be worth it to a player to use them for a short amount of time, but if it means they can use those characters over an extended period of time, then it makes their investment worthwhile. I just personally don't think the argument of a consumer knowing they're paying for this to pay, uh, they're paying this to get that is a very fair one. Appreciate your hard work on the show, Cameron. So I, I see this come up all the time uh, on the subreddit and stuff. The fact that, oh, well, Greg or Andrew, whoever's on the show, they've lost sight of what it's like to be buying games. Uh, they get stuff for free, obviously, for review and for playing and all this different stuff. I can never make that. I can never tell you that I have or haven't lost sight. I don't think I have. I And if anything, I would say, here, let's just dial it back to DC Universe Online. I pay $150 a year, and I have no intention anytime soon to play DC Universe Online again, but I loved the 750 hours I put into DC Universe Online. Yeah. I pay the $150 because now I've lost touch. Definitely not because I'm rich, <laughs> but because I fucking loved that game that much, 
and I want that game to continue. And it's very much the argument we just read from Rami's f- friend, right? The fact that I'm happy to be in a place where I can give that game $150 and I can keep that game running for the other people who want to go play it for free. And not to mention the fact that this is what Colin and I used to talk about all the time with like Witcher 3 and expanding the, or, you know, actually utilizing the whole scope of uh, pricing model where what if CD Projekt Red would have been at the start of Witcher 3 or going into Cyberpunk is going to be like, hey, this game's going to be $100. Not 60. It's going to be $100, but you're going to get all the, the all the content you got for The Witcher. You're going to get that plus more for this game. Would people be open to that in an honest discussion, right? Of like, w- w- pricing structures have changed. Games have yeah. changed. Like, a, like a built-in things. season pass, basically. Exactly. Basically. And so for DC Universe Online, like, I don't, I think of anything with all due respect to you, I'd like to imagine that that my rationale of I love that game and I love those developers and I love what they've done and I do want to be able to go back on a whim and play it when I want. I'd like to imagine, similar to the patron of the arts argument, that well, how you take care of Kind of Funny, where so many of you give us money and don't necessarily take advantage of the free downloads. I'd like to imagine there's more gamers, more consumers out there like me like that. Everyone's in a different financial spot. Yeah, I totally yeah. get that. But... I don't buy, you know, I buy season passes for the games I play. I was talking about this. You know, if I get a game for free and I have a great time with it, I'm super likely to be like, all right, let's buy the season pass. Even though if I don't know I'll ever use that content, yeah, yeah, yeah. I am so proud. It's For me, it's like a tip jar. Yeah. yeah Here yeah. you go. I want to make sure you get this money back. Do you, yeah. do you see it like that? You're talking yeah. about the mobile games you invest in. Yeah, absolutely. It's the same sort of deal. It's like, if I appreciate and respect something, I'm going to go ahead and buy it. Like, I mean, like we got free copies of Assassin's Creed, but it's like, I went ahead and bought it on the Xbox. It's like, yeah, I'm going to buy it again. I'll play it on PC, buy it on the Xbox too. And it's right. like. There, there's certain developers, certain titles that I want to show my my passion and my appreciation for, and that's the way we do it. I mean, we do work in a weird world that we do get a lot of games for free, yeah. and it's kind of like it's a dream come true as a kid. But but now it's like, yeah, like how can, you know, to me, like honestly, for me, it's like, all right, we got these games for free. Let's make content in, in them to kind of like show. That's the, another great way of yeah, it, right? Yeah, I mean, like literally, it's like we're making content in games that people go watch, and then hopefully that will, you know, facilitate more purchases. Or, yeah. or you know, maybe we don't have fun with it. It's like, well, all right, well, We'll teach our audience. So and then it comes back to the Nintendo thing again. Yeah. So the why they hurt, they keep hurting themselves on this. Yeah. So I don't, I feel like I still can relate. I would like to think I can. I still have bills to pay. I still can't retire and walk away from everything. I still I got to ask you guys to trip in on Patreon and do these different things. I, I don't think I have. I just think, I think even if I was on the outside, I would still make the $150 and an, annually to give to DC Universe Online. Uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy pack, I now feel is a moot point based on the fact that uh, they have announced since then, Gazillion put out a statement. Their uh, servers are going to run now until. Uh, what is it? The close of day on December 31st, 2017. Uh, I'll be there playing hopefully as it goes <laughs> offline, even though it's new year's Eve. So it's like, there's other stuff going on. So I think you're getting the, even if you put your money in, you bought that recently, you're getting your money out of it. They did say, of course, that now they're going to make everything free over the coming weeks. So you can just get in there and enjoy oh, it. Okay. But again, there's that, there is that side of, if I had put the 50 bucks in, there would have been that side of like, Oh fuck, it's gonna be free in how many weeks. But then there's also the thing of like, well, I understand you need to pay people still and you're yeah. doing this and doing that. And like, there's got to be something there for the business side of it. And this is the argument or not argument, but the conversation we keep having here of the push and pull of games is art and games is a business yeah. and where you find it. All. And that's the thing too, is you see a lot of companies where it's like, you know, you see like an EA putting on a game like, Oh, screw those guys. Like the giant corporation. It's like, there's still people behind these games that are passionate and are very, you know, 100%. have been working on games their whole life for a, like, Maybe there's someone working on that team that, like, when they were a kid growing up, they used to love Star Wars. Now they're working their first game ever, and they're working on Star Wars Battlefront 2, and it's like, ah, oh, you know. And, like, to me, I always think of that. Like, I always, I'm the one who sits through credits in movies and go, like, I watch, you know, yep. every, like, below below the line people. I'm like, oh, these are all people that busted their ass to make this thing happen. And yeah. I, like, and you got to show the respect of at least watching their names, you yeah. know. And so, and then sometimes you get a stinger too, but that's a whole yeah, other thing. Yeah. But yeah, you got to think about those people working in these games because these games, they take four to six years to make. Like some of them, some of the bigger ones do. Yeah. And these people just put their heart and soul into it. And then it sucks when you have like a marketing team or like a, like a team that crunches numbers. Like how can we get, how can we squeeze the most out of this rock? Yeah. Which like just kind of deflates everything these people have been working on. So I stand by too. And I know that I, I don't have anything other than AMAs and statements and stuff like that. I really feel like Dice didn't, start down this road to be bad people yeah. I f- with battlefront 2 i really do feel like their argument of like we thought you know putting luke and vader at the end of this would be we want you to grind i i keep bringing up the fact that it's a friday the 13th which i love yeah has a fucking awful trophy list right yeah, yeah. and like even then you have to play really you know like into the 40s now to unlock the most recent jason you have to put a lot of time into that game i think that some developers and i think dice being one of them 
are the fact of like, well, people got out of Battlefront 1 too quickly. They thought there was nothing there. Let's give them a reason to play it for six months. Let's yeah, give yeah. them a reason. And they just over course correct it. Yeah, to, yeah. And then and then having the every you know this cloud of dust and dirt and like people already being like, oh, wait, what's going on? Why? Oh, there's no season pass. That's cool. Wait, I'm getting this. And is it pay to win? And like as soon as pay to win gets mentioned and people have examples, you're fucked. Yeah, and it's yeah. back to the, the point from Rami's friend, right? Of like, Yep. Once that's set, and once people have that lens on, that's they're gonna. Yep. That's what they think you're doing every way. And I really do feel that Battlefront gets released officially on Friday, right? And once it's yeah. out, once it's out for two weeks, I bet that in-game economy looks entirely different. Yeah. And they've gone in there and tried to settle it because, again, to your point, the people making this game aren't yeah. chomping on cigars, being fat cats about it. They're <laughs> yeah. like, we wanted to make an awesome Star Wars, and we have gotten off track here. Yeah. How do yeah. we fix that and then get back to? Making maps, making characters, making yeah. cool shit, and that, that is sort of the beauty of games now is like games can change. I mean, like you, like yeah. one of my favorite things that Ubisoft does. Like I've been, I mean, I'm a Ubisoft fanboy. Like I'm, I'm very biased towards Ubisoft because I've always loved their games, and people give me shit for it. But it's like, sorry, I like their titles. You know, I'm gonna Ubi's support great. them. Um, they released games that f- were failed, like failed initially, like had issues, like something like like Rainbow Six Siege yep. came out. It wasn't a great game at first, and it was kind of odd. It is now fantastic. You know, something like like Assassin's Creed Unity came out lots and lots of issues initially now it's a great game yeah. and like like in games can do that destiny did that where like they started yeah. out kind of rough and they patched it and made it to the point where it's like oh we now have, are watching our feedback we're watching our audience and it's like okay this is the game that people want the most and well, this sorry and they rework it and so like I, I i respect that we can do that now with battlefront as well i and i know i for a lot of people daily listeners who are sick of these conversations sorry <laughs> it's the argument that how many people who are freaking out about this and e- e- calling like I'm never going to play enough to unlock it. I'm I, like I'm going to ch- tinker with multiplayer eventually. Like I've had the game. I've yeah. had it you know for a week a uh, week or two now since for reviewing. Yeah. Okay, cool. I haven't fucking turned it on cuz I'm so busy. How many people who are freaking out about loot crates and microtransactions and etc were ever going to play this game? Yeah. When yeah. there is a when there's a lightning rod moment in this 2017 is definitely hey, we have to put our foot down about what is and it isn't okay when it comes to microtransactions and games. Everyone comes in with an opinion, but to your point, like I remember when Rainbow Six launched, and it was like, "Ooh, this yeah. didn't come together," and moved on. And then you came back, and it was like, "You moved this rock," and there's this huge community there. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. the people who in two weeks are going to still be playing Battlefront are going to be the ones who are giving them real feedback and yeah. not just being assholes on Twitter and explaining, and going and touching. Like it's the same way Bungie works with the community yeah. and figures all the stuff out. And so uh, hopefully by like the time the first major DLC hits for it, it'll be like, "Oh, things all like all the major issues have been corrected," and like yeah. we'll maybe get this audience that are coming back. Like, "Oh, okay, yeah." The- no Man's Sky, right? Right? Like yeah, yeah. Exactly. Here's, we actually fixed and listened and gone, but yeah, we'll knows? see. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, number four and final on the Roper Report. It's double XP in Destiny 2 this weekend. This is from Polygon. If you've fallen off the Destiny 2 train somewhat, this weekend will be a great time to get back on. You'll earn double the experience points for everything you do. Uh, Destiny developer Bungie calls this limited time event a clarion call and... This particular one, the first for Destiny 2, only applies to clans. In other words, the only caveat to earning double XP is that you have to be in a fire team with at least one other player who's in the same clan as you. The Clarion Call will run from 10 a.m. Pacific on Friday, November 17th until 10 a.m. on Monday, November 20th. Bungie noted it's I'm sorry, Bungie noted in its announcement last week that now is a good time to join a clan if you aren't already in one. It's not clear, but you may have to do that before the Clarion call begins. In the examples of clan Ingrams, which might operate similarly, you don't earn them until after the first weekly reset following your joining of the clan. We've asked Bungie for clarification, and we'll update this article with any information we receive. Bungie did say that it will hold future Clarion calls uh, that don't require clan membership, so fret not if you don't like playing with other people. I need to knock out my Warlock trophy on my uh, 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 Platinum Chase for Destiny 2. So, if you're in my clan... This weekend, I'll be playing. I'll have my clan open to clan, or I'll have my uh, fire team open to clan only. If you see me on and no one in there, jump on because I'm just going to be rolling in public events. Nice. Trying to get the fucking skills all unlocked so I can dump this Warlock and never use it again. (laughs) I'm a hunter. But I gotta get this trophy. How'd you feel about the uh, PC coming out a month after, a month and a half after the consoles? I, f- I felt great about it. Really? Fuck you, PC players. <laughs> Fuck you into the ground, PC players. Dude. I'm joking. Everybody, calm down. Oh my god, the PC. It, it's so awesome. It looks yeah, so it good look on really PC, yeah. and it breaks my heart. There's no cross save or anything. Yeah. It's just like, or even it's like, give me a token where I don't have to do that grind again. Like, yep. say like Bungie. Is there a way I can prove like, oh look, I made it to light level whatever on Real this five. character. Yeah, yeah. Let me just be able to hit a button. Boom! It puts me at like you know two fifty, and it's like, but I'm at level you know I've be, I've beaten the main story, unlocked everything. Yeah, yeah. It's like let me have that. 
And then just so I don't have to grind it up again. But I'm mm. blown away by the people who are doing it again. Yeah. Who did get to 305 and have all characters at 305 and are still going. You yeah. know what I mean? I, uh, when I went to Extra Life this weekend or whatever, I was playing. There's this guy out there. He's helped me play, doing nice. all these different things. What up, Tony? And uh, it's he did like his PlayStation characters are all like perfect, but he's like more. In, he's like I've done so much more in PC. I'm like, how is that possible? What are you doing? How you know? They're just going out there, being crazy about yeah. it. Yeah. See, the, the heartbreaking thing for us is like, you know, we're not heartbreaking, but the thing for us is we, we played it on the Xbox, and we know now. I mean, like Xbox, you know, we're gonna have to jump over to Xbox One, but like Xbox, we don't know. You know, four years from now or three years from now, when we're still playing Destiny Two and like whatever the final raids are, two years from now, whatever. Yeah. yeah. It's like we've now committed ourselves to the Xbox version of it because yeah. Jeff will never play on the PC. And so it's like, all right, we're going to always play on Xbox now. And so like maybe the PC gets better. looks, looks even crazier, faster. We're going to have to keep playing on Xbox because that's where we started. You yeah. know? And it's like, yep, all right, that's it. Now we've locked ourselves into the Xbox version of destiny Two. Do you hate that? I mean, like, I mean, you figure down the road, not cross save, but I would imagine similar when they dropped the taken King DLC, right? Yeah. Where they gave you the ability to boom in there. You yeah, went yeah, up to, yeah. they got a, Patch something like you, that. You it? figure something like that, but you look at games like Rocket League and you look at these cross-platform games. When is that going to hit? And I think, I think for this one specifically, uh, I know Sony has a lot of exclusives with with Destiny. Yeah. And I'm sure Sony paid a shit ton of money to make sure cross-platform doesn't happen. Sure, because Sony right now is the king of the consoles, and so they're like, all right, we're going to keep our position as much as we can. We're going to prevent Microsoft from allowing to have PC and Xbox. Yeah, and so and it's funny. There was a game. Was it wasn't was it it wasn't a wasn't Friday the 13th. There was a game that recently... Fortnite did it accidentally yeah, for a for, weekend, yeah. Yeah, yeah Fortnite. Every, every, I mean, Rocket League says it all the time. We're one button press away. Yeah. If, yeah. if PlayStation would let us, it would totally happen. Yeah, yeah. So so Fortnite accidentally allowed cross-platform play yeah. between PlayStation, Xbox, and PC. Yeah. And it's like, oh, whoops. All right, and turn it off again. And it's like, yeah, it's ready to go. It's super easy to do. I mean, apparently, and I mean, it's super easy to enable, and like, they just can't do it. They're not the bigger to reason, it. I think, with Destiny, right, would be the fact that it's a first-person shooter, and there yeah. is a competitive thing, so anybody mouse and keyboard is going to be more accurate than okay. console. Then limit pvp to just just whatever platform you're on sure but like if i'm if i'm playing a raid or if i'm doing pve let yeah. me play with whoever i want yeah you know let me play on my pc while jeff plays on X, on his xbox and be yeah. happy with it and so i'll be sitting there on the planet waiting for him to warp down yeah <laughs> so <laughs> god load in already yeah yeah but, but you love destiny 2 i i really enjoy destiny 2 the story is really good um it feels like the drop off has been a lot quicker this time it feels mm -hmm. like it feels like it ended and like all right and i'm kind of like eh, okay well I feel, I, what, I've seen know. articles. Uh, who was it? Jeez. Someone put an article that I've talked about on the show before, but how this was like, it, it, there is less to do or whatever. Or it's more manageable to do, which is better for the casual player. It's yeah. better for me. Like, you know, Destiny 1 ended and I saw the, what was happening and I was like, what this gear treadmill is going to be. And I'm like, I've done that in DC Universe. I don't need to do that now and bounced out. Whereas this one was, okay, cool. Like, there's not that it's not overwhelming to jump on and figure out how to move up and how to increase my life. Yeah. And I'm making progress every day because I'm still like, what, 297 and 98 on my main. And so 305 is not that far out. I do yeah. a few more raids. I do a few more things. But it is like you pop in, do the weekly stuff, and then you're gone. And like yeah. It is a commitment of however many hours a week. Yeah. yeah. And so, I mean, I, I, I dig it. I like I mean, Destiny is really good. I, I love the idea of, you know, multiple like I love I love PVE is my is my jam. Yeah. Like I am not a PVP player. Nope, not at all. And so any game that gives me a raid where I can play with my friends and have like, you know, I started World of Warcraft. We were doing like 25 or not 25 man. I was in the 10 man raids, but it's like stuff like that. And then going to Destiny one, we had six man raids and then like Division has their raids. And it's like, oh, I love this kind of stuff. Yeah. And um, I hopefully we get more of that. Hopefully we get more of the the cooperative Games. Hundred percent. Yeah, and I mean so, that's what Osiris is talking about, right? In yeah, terms yeah, of yeah. everything they're reviewing. That's yeah. what I want. That, I just want more stuff like that. Jack, I want more Destiny as soon as I can get it, but yeah. it's still a ways off. It is a little ways off. If I wanted to know what came to the Mom and Rob digital shops today, where would I go? I can tell you, Greg, because in my hand I have the official list of upcoming software across each and every platform, as listed by the Kind of Funny Games Daily show host each and every weekday. <laughs> Yeah. Kevin gave you a big thumbs up on it. You knocked oh, it out. Oh, is that what it was? Great job. Okay, thank you. Out today, Ashes Cricket on Xbox One and PS4. De Blob on PlayStation 4. Knights of Valor on PS4. Tannenberg, PC, Max, and Linux. Ugh. Antiquia Lost on Switch. <laughs> uh, one of those Neo Geo. Antiquia. Antiquia Lost on Switch. Uh, 
Karvanov's Revenge on uh, Nintendo Switch, Lumo on Switch, Break In on the Virtual Console for Wii U, uh, Salamander on Virtual Console for the Wii Console for the Wii U, and then the big one, Skyrim on Switch. Scrim has been on how many different platforms? Now? I think it's on my toaster. Right my now. God, like you can play it on a, a washing machine. Still if got you the PlayStation to. VR version coming yeah. up too. I think that's tomorrow, like, right? Yeah. It seems like like Doom is the new. Or, you know, Doom was the new Hello World, and I think now it's going to be Skyrim is the new Hello World. Like, yeah. What can we put this thing on? It's everywhere. Yeah, but people love it. Keep buying it up people yep. stoked for it on switch uh new dates for you this one's exciting everybody russian subway dogs is coming to playstation 4 and playstation vita they sent me a press release and i watched it it looks it's an arcade game where you're a russian dog on the subway that steals food <laughs> fuck yeah i'm in i'm totally in on vita why not right. as i said earlier marvel heroes is going to close on december 31st uh batman I, this is old news but the trailer dropped and i don't think i ever talked about it on the show because it might have happened uh, like when i was gone i don't know if i ever got it Batman Telltale Series Episode 3 of Season 2 comes out November 21st. And then PlayStation announced a PlayStation VR Doom VFR bundle that drops on December 1st. Cool. You care about VR at all? Is that I, taking over anywhere? I have an Oculus in my house. Yeah. Uh, I had it installed for a little bit. I was like, oh, this is pretty cool. And, you know, I like I tried playing uh, a Bridge Simulator, Star yeah. Trek game, which is kind of cool. Again, cooperative. Ubisoft, uh, too. Yeah. yeah. Fucking chill. Yeah, I'm super chill. Um, <laughs> let's keep those checks coming in. We did a party mode on it. Go watch it. Kind of funny. Dot com slash. No. no. Well, it, it's a fun YouTube game. Games. And uh, uh, I mean, it's basically, did you ever play Artemis, the Bridge Simulator? It's, no. it's like another version of Artemis. It, like, Artemis is like eight player, though. So it's the same sort of a deal where it's like everyone's got like, an iPad sure. and they do their thing. It was fun. Yeah. And, um, and so try that but uh mostly i terrified the crap out of katie uh <laughs> i put it on and <laughs> sh i showed her the demo and the one with the alien popped up and yeah so i didn't know this but when the scenes transition it fades and i kind of freaked her out so she closed her eyes and she opened it there's an alien in her face and so she's screaming through the headset yeah um but yeah it's um i still the problem the problem with vr is i wear glasses you wear mm -hmm. glasses when you wear vr you have to put the vr over the glasses and it's pressing against your head yeah and uh, i that, hate the sound of the glass hitting the glass too yeah like, yeah really and it's just like it. and then like your eyes flatten up against the glasses and yeah. it gets all sticky and gross and so if i think if i had contacts or if i had like lasik i would probably be a lot more into vr than i am my now. prescription's light enough where i can take them off yeah and, so, and still play and be I, comfortable. I can do that but i mean i have like a you know i have a light prescription as well but there's definitely is a loss of, of sure. depth there you know when i take it i was like a little blurry but like wear glasses okay it's much clearer but it's a huge pain in the ass so yeah. maybe maybe if someone figures out some sort of lens you can put in over the vr like like drop it into an oculus or a vive that would be something cool. Like make a prescription one that you could do oh, that. Yeah, sure. But I don't know. Someone figure that out and make a billion They're dollars. They're on it. They're going to get a billion dollars. Yeah, VR is making a billion dollars. Oh. Not any fucking time soon. Reader mail. Hey. Let's get serious. French Stewart writes in to kindoffunny.com slash KFGD and said, and I, I assume it's the French Stewart from Third Rock. From yeah, the yeah. He says, Hey there, Greg and Jack. Long time, first time, but cutting to the chase. Which, I'm sorry, with the constantly growing list of companies and powerful people being accused of sexual harassment, IGN this week and Naughty Dog before that, specifically speaking to gaming, I wanted to get y'all's opinion. I know Greg probably knows all parties involved with the IGN case, and I'm not asking him to share specifics, gross gossip, or anything like that. Since you are both working in office, offices that are let's say not safe for work. How do you guys define where the line is? And can you know if you're crossing the line before it's too late? I know I've said things that could certainly look bad if it was released in a statement, but I wouldn't say those things if I didn't know the person I'm saying into, I wouldn't say those things if I didn't know the person I was saying it to, how they would interpret it. I certainly understand if you don't pick this question a personal political reason. Oh, we don't care about that. We're all best friends. We're going to talk about it. And it's something that definitely needs to be talked about. Uh, I've been in the Achievement Hunter office. You've been in our office. <laughs> it is often not safe for work in yeah, both places. Yeah. Um, it's interesting. I also it, want to say, too, real quick, French Stewart also congratulated us on a good extra life. So thank you very much. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. P.S. Congratulations for bo to both of you on a successful extra life fundraiser or two. Enjoyed watching both streams. High five. High five. We love extra life. Uh, back to sexual harassment. Uh, <laughs> it's weird and different, I think. I like uh, Working at IGN was a very different thing than working at Kind of Funny. Yes. Kind of Funny, there's seven of us. Obviously, it started as four of us. Like, we're all incredibly close friends. And so... If anything, I think we're good at dialing each other back. Of like, all right, well, you're getting to, you know, that yeah. well, I would be right, you know, those kind of things. And when that happens, I think that's how you avoid this situation in our personal experience, right? Yeah. In yeah. the way that I trust every one of them enough and know them well enough, and they trust me enough and know me well enough that you can ch check and balance each other 
And if somebody does cross a line and not even not even offend you, but more hurt your feelings, yeah, you can say to them, "Hey, man, that's too." F-, and they're like, oh, okay, cool. They'll, everybody backs off and handles it a different way. Yeah, it, well, it's definitely one of those things. Like with Achievement Hunter, I've known you know I've known Jeff for over a decade now, yeah. and like I've known most of those guys for you know five six years, and we know each other well enough that we're not going to offend each other. Yeah. So the the problem becomes not the problem, but the thing the issue becomes the line you walk. Yeah, it becomes like. It doesn't offend me. Will this offend other yep. people? And then that's where it gets sticky. You know, it's like when we have seen, you know, like there's stuff. If you go back, and watch some of our older stuff, there's stuff in there. It's like now I'm like, oh, oh yeah, Jesus totally. Christ, how do we get away with that? And then I see some groups like I love Funhouse, but Funhouse definitely gets away with stuff that we could never get away with just because our audiences are different. Sure. And it, it is it is definitely something we've been watching now and like in trying to you actually I mean, you have to focus on it. You have to pay attention to it. Like, yeah. oh, yeah, we can't can't bring that up. We can't talk about that. You know, they can't, can't say that anymore. And, like, and, and, and what I think is very interesting in it, we're, the way we're interpreting your question, French, versus what exactly is happening, right, is the fact that we're very much talking about talking. Yeah. And that's yeah. the thing where we've stopped the Game Over Greggy show before. I've been like, we can't, you can't say that, or that doesn't mean what you think it means. And because, again, I know everyone at that table well enough to know what their intentions are and that their intentions would never be to yeah. go at somebody like that. In terms of sexual harassment, right? Now, granted, don't get me wrong. Sexual harassment can easily be verbal, this, that, or the other. But, like, dick pics or weird, you know, coming on to people. Yeah. In, in violating people's personal space and stuff. Like, you know, it's been brought up before. Uh, hey, like, I've gotten personal emails about it. And I know there was a Reddit thread, right? Of just like, hey, you guys are, like, weird to Andy a lot. <laughs> We're calling him Candy Andy and doing this stuff. We would never do that if Andy wasn't in on the joke. Yeah, like, yeah. Andy's reactions are part of the joke. He's playing yeah. along with it. And But if it ever was that he w- we made him uncomfortable or took it too far, I know Andy well enough to know that Andy would say, that was too far, guys. Let's stop doing yeah. this. Well, even like like Extra Life last weekend, um, during the Screw Attack uh, segment, we did like Japanese game shows. Yeah. And so it was all painful stuff for them. And so Chad, who was hosting, loved Chad. He's amazing. On the wheel of on the wheel of vengeance, like our, our punishment yeah. wheel, he put on there host kiss because it was me, Ryan, and Chad were hosting, and he's like, "Are you cool with this? I want to know this before yeah. I put up, like before we came back." And I'm like, "Yeah, that's fine. Whatever." Yeah. Man. we I had guess. almost kiss on our board, which was pretty much kiss. Yeah, yeah. And so, <laughs> and he asked me, he asked Ryan, he's like, "If that hits, are you okay with that?" Like, yeah, I'm sure, whatever. I'm, yeah. I'm comfortable. Like, I don't, I don't have any issue with that. And he's like, "All right, cool." So he was very much like upfront, like, "Yeah, I'm gonna make sure you're cool with that." And so. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're, we're smart. Like we're, I mean, we're entertainers is what it comes exactly. down to. We are the dancing monkeys for you. And so we know what, like where our lines are, our personal lines are, and yeah. we will, you know, we will make sure they're never crossed. And if they are crossed, well, there'll be, you know, there'll be discussions. Exactly. And so, um, it, that, that's the thing though. It's like, we've been doing this now. Like I've been working with these guys now so long. My line for them is very of difficult course. to cross. It would take a significant amount of like personal, personal attacks to make me even, you know, worry about that stuff. Cause yeah. that's our style of gaming and like, oh, that's our style of content creation. And yeah. so it's tough because like, especially within that it's, it's one thing. And the people who do, do work for us, our editors our behind the scenes. People are non face people that you, you might, you know, you might recognize their name, but you've never seen their, you know, seen them doing stuff with us. Like they understand that too. And it's very clear. It's like, you're coming into an environment where this is, I mean, we have in, we have a code of conduct handbook and in the code of conduct sure handbook, that. it literally says like, you have to understand Roosh Teeth is an environment where, you know, um, you know, con- things happen. We're that, zany. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas literally it's like, you know, you might be asked to do certain things. If you're not comfortable with that, say Just no. Say, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it's yeah. like, okay. And you, you get used to it. And like, but you have to understand there will be stuff that goes around that in other environments would be considered, you know, uh, you know, not aggressive, but like, you know, not appropriate. It's not something you could go do at the bank yeah yeah exactly like, we currently have a dick up on the wall that's just stuck to the wall and it's like <laughs> like there is a giant you know black penis in our ceiling like a dildo facing down over jeremy's desk and one day and that's like, coming down <laughs> yeah it's been up there for about six months so okay. but i mean that's just like that's our environment that's the work environment you're sure. coming into and it's and like it, and it's we've hired people right obviously and, and gone beyond just the four and five of us including kevin like it's something we we not worry about, but I'm I'm concerned about. Yeah. I, ch- I check in. I'd like to think often enough of like, you okay? Is this okay? Like, we wanna, like we don't want anyone to feel weird. But yeah, yeah. Is, is that's a weird thing of? I mean, you know what? Joey, Andy, Cool Greg, they all knew what who we were and what the humor was. Yeah, yeah. And that, that's the thing too is like when I, I should I should preface this by saying I'm not speaking on behalf of Rooster Teeth in this situation. This is me personally and my interaction with an achievement hunter. Like Rooster Teeth is a large company now with like nearly 400 employees. And like, yeah, of course. Like we we have HR and we have had sessions and stuff where it's like, all right, yeah, we're going to talk about this stuff. And like, yeah. you know, we we have people who work for the company that are like, you know, going through going through transitions. And it's like, oh, here's information about it. And it's like they're very open, very honest, and very 
willing to talk about things. And so that that sort of stuff, like seeing us grow up as a company like that makes me very happy. Yeah. And But at the same time, we can still make dick jokes and, and be goofy around each other and still make the same kind of content and not not censor ourselves. So it's 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 a very it's a very interesting times we're in right now and yeah. sort of how everyone's reacting and sort of you know where the lines are being drawn and, I was know. talking about it with you last night right like I've, as soon as all this starts happening I sit there and I'm like well what wait like start running through everything yep. you've ever not anything you've ever said because obviously who can remember everything but I mean the fact of like I wonder if I've ever made this person comfortable with that mm-hmm. or blah 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 and so like that's something I mean I love everybody who works here and so that's something that we're definitely cognizant of and I, I definitely hope that everyone knows me well enough and knows each other well enough that if it, a line was crossed they would bring it up and rather than feel like I feel like the whenever you when the, the, the common thread for most of these sexual harassment stories right is the fact that it happens and they person doesn't know how to process it or they're horrified or you know they they're afraid to speak up yeah right. I'd like to imagine that no one here is afraid to speak up if a line was crossed yeah, and maybe yeah. not immediately in that moment but to pull you aside later and be like hey like I don't know but like yeah. what you're talking about where we're all entertainers we're all just trying to get a laugh out of you right Kevin yeah. <laughs> Kevin how's the employee handbook for kind of funny coming you working on that as HR Oh, yeah, I got a crayon, some paper. I'm fine. It's, it's going, just the dude. tiny torture wheel whiteboard over here. That's what we got. Uh, let's get into PSX real quick. Let's do it. Tav and Boffle. Who's sa- this is like a Star Wars I name. I was going to say, it sounds like a name that it, like yeah, I would say back. I'm saying it, it would be backwards and I'd get transported <laughs> in another dimension. Uh, the PSX 2017 exhibitors list has been released and Sucker Punch isn't on the list. I don't know if my expectations were wrong, but I thought. It took so long for them to announce their new game because they wanted to be closer to a complete game before saying anything. Is Sucker Punch's absence a sign that it will take longer than, say, early 2019 before we see the game? Okay, so if you didn't see, PlayStation Blog put up a list of companies and games that are being shown there. Sucker Punch isn't there, but that is the exhibitors list, Tavin. You know, I don't think you have to sweat that. They've said publicly that Dreams and Sucker, um, so Media Molecule and Sucker Punch are going to be at that Friday night kickoff opening ceremony, whatever the hell they're calling it thing. So I think there's where you'll see it. I think that the list of exhibitors and games means that you'll be able to play it. That'll be on the show floor. You'll be able to walk up to it and get a controller in your hand. So I don't think you have to sweat it there. Uh, I don't think you have to worry about it. I mean, with the amount of exclusives Sony has lined up right now, I don't think it's even a, a oh, early 2019. Before, I, you'll see the game at PSX. They're going to do something there on that night, I would assume. This is all assumptions. I don't have any inside information. You're talking about Spider-Man, right? Is that, no, or, that's or Insomniac. Not? Oh, Sucker Insomniac. Punch is the one doing the uh, samurai-like game that got announced at Paris Games Week. Whoa. What's it called? Yeah, that's what I'm blanking on. Kevin, can you get me the name real quick? Sucker Punch, Paris Games Week, their new game. Buddy. Sh- Shadow? It's Shinju... Shin- Shin- Shinjuku, no. Shinobi. Shin, yeah, no, no. That'd be too easy. Shin kicker. Anyways, Kevin's getting that for you. Okay. It'll be there. You'll see it there. I think you'd get more at E3. And I would think, yeah, 2019 probably. But again, where's The Last of Us Part 2 going to be? Where's that going to fall? There's yeah. so many different games out there. Shin. Just drop the T and yeah. I think Kevin's. Ghost the of. Ghost of what, Kevin? How do you pronounce it? Just can you throw it up? There you go. There Thank go. you. Ghost, Ghost of, of Tsushima. Tsushima. Yeah. Thank you very much. Trailer's really good. You should watch it. Okay, I'll watch it. It's really interesting. Uh, so don't fret on Sucker Punch. I think you're fine. I think you'll see... 2019, I don't think you'll... I, it depends. It would take longer than, say, 20, early 2019 before we see the game. You'll see the game before then. I would imagine E3, you're going to get another dose of it. Game Freak 55 also says, Hey guys, today the PlayStation blog shared the list of exhibitors for PSX. I'm a little confused. Does that mean games? Does that mean games by those devs will be playable on the show floor? If yes then that list includes Ben and Insomniac, among others, which is pretty exciting. That's what we just talked about. Exactly. The, they listed the exhibitors and they listed the games. If you don't, I, I breezed through it real quick. And I, I was going to, is it newsworthy? It's not that newsworthy, I didn't think. But again, if it's an exhibitor, that would mean that there's going to be a Ben booth, that there would be an Insomniac booth. Are you going to play Spider-Man or well, Days Gone or Spider-Man respectively? I would say no, but you never know. Yeah. yeah. They want to give you some space out there. Yeah, conventions are always a weird beast too. Because, like, like, I mean, you think about it, like you see something like, um, like Red Dead Redemption Two 
has not been an E3 or any other. Oh major sure, commission. Rockstar doesn't need it. Yeah, Rockstar. I mean, that's it's just weird to think that though. It's like yeah. that's going to be a huge title. That'll be one of the largest games next yeah. year. Yeah, and it's like oh yeah, it hasn't hasn't been anywhere. That's because they're like yeah, we're whatever. They're the mystique they're, of Rockstar. They are they are the Pixar of the gaming world, where it's like you just trust anything they release. Yep. I mean, I love the fact that they put out a red version of the Rockstar logo and it got a million retweets. <laughs> it's like that's it. It was literally just the, the R and it was red and it was like all right, there you go. Yeah, and it was a million retweets. I can't wait for that game, dude. That's dude, I'm so excited. And that's why game. they're Rockstar because they don't have to do anything. So and we're excited. all stoked for it. Time to squad up. This is where one of you writes into kindoffunny.com slash KFGD. Give me your name, username, platform of choice, and why you need help in a video game. I read it here. The best friends come and find you. Everyone plays games and has a good time. Today, Mac needs help. Uh, he's battled... What, is, what does he need? What he's on, he's on need? Battle.net as Mac, apparently. And he wow. says, looking for some super chill friends to join my Destiny 2 clan. Very casual just wanted to create a group that was a no pressure just have fun easy going time we want to create a culture of respect and help i'm new to destiny play via pc and hoping to find two cool cats to play with no pressure and it's in a no pressure environment hoping you can help my clan name is deus x machina that's good m-a-c-k machina i-n-a machina deus x machina battle net id is mac we are three strong <laughs> winky emoji Thanks. Everybody go join up with Mac on battle.net. Deus Ex Machina is the name, which is a great name for a clan. That seems like one of those, like, when you go to college, you see, like, the, the wanted boards, like, looking for a drummer for yeah, the yeah, band. Yeah, like, yeah. that felt like that. Deus Ex Machina needs a hunter, man. We need a bat right now. There's, we need we some want chill. Raid, man. We need some chill, no pressure guys to come play with us on battle.net. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's another episode of Kind of Funny Games Daily in the books. Tomorrow, Tim will join me to close out the week. Jack, thank you for coming by. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. It's no a lot problem. of fun. Yeah, you got more stuff to do here, though. So don't yeah, worry. Yeah, I'm not going anywhere. If I'm, you're, we're, we're, seeing, we're doing one more thing, and then we're doing Justice League. Yeah. Ooh, can't wait. If you're watching live, of course, Kind of Funny Games, uh, no, the Kind of Funny Games cast will be recording at 3 p.m. Pacific time. You can go to patreon.com slash kind of funny games. Get the live link there. What, Kevin? You're wrong. What did I say? Oh, yeah, I got to do you're wrong. Thank you, Kevin, for telling me I was wrong. Good point. We have this thing called you're wrong, where you're oh. right into the show if you're watching live, kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong. Were we wrong, wrong about anything? Uh, well, we're about to find out. And the answer is, of course, yes. Oh, okay. I always say just facts. People still editorialize. This is where we cut to Max Kellerman and he tells us everything. Yes, it you get it. You understand stat yeah. boy. Thank you so much. <laughs> we, we, Capitalist Pig is the one we need to cut to eventually. Here we go. Um, Ignacio Rojas is correcting you. The Super Nintendo wasn't the last Nintendo console to release with a Mario game, and N64 had Mario 64, okay. Game Boy Advance had I this, blah, blah, blah. You, know, you weren't really making a statement, but you were just talking. Um, I, was, I was just talking. Just just saying words. Capitalist, words. That's just how we do it. Capitalist Pig says, uh, the idea of a bulk upfront cost for games has been tried in the past, just named differently. The largest example I can think of off the top of my head is the idea of a lifetime subscription that several MMOs, such as the Secret World Star, Star Trek Online, and DC Universe offered when they all first popped up. These games at launch offered lifetime access to their games with an upfront cost of 200 to 300 games. Important to note, most of these are free to play now. And then Shredberg says, Greg, you said Skyrim comes out today on Switch. It's actually tomorrow, November 17th. Thank you. It's confusing trying to keep all these Switch things, and Nintendo makes it all awkward when they send you their thing now. But they didn't do it, and I've had Skyrim on Switch for a week, so I don't even know when anything's happening. What the hell is up with games coming out on Fridays? When did that become a thing? They're trying to become like, you know, the block, like movies. It works. I don't, Dude, honestly, it's more of a thing of, it makes sense. I guess so, but I like my Tuesday releases because we get our Tuesday games and we start making content and have it sure. up for that week. But sure, now it's sure, like, sure. game comes out on Friday, we play it, and then we don't have content up for like a week and a, or for the next week. So you're just mad at a business perspective, yeah, I see. Yeah, yeah, was, see, you're the man, you've forgotten what it was like to be uh, a normal consumer. I'm, not I'm me. A big fat cat chomping <laughs> on my cigar. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this has been Kind of Funny Games Daily. Until next time. It's been our pleasure to serve you. Shake my hand. Yeah. Shaking your hand. Woo-woo!